자. We're down here on the top of Manor Complex. It's the middle of winter, so it's middle of February now, and we're down fishing Willow Bank. I do have a little bit of experience of this lake before. We generally come here sort of every February for the past few years. I'm down here with Paul, who's sort of my fishing partner, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get amongst the fish. Speaking to other anglers who are at the moment leaving, um, the lake actually un only just unfroze on, on Friday. So that's going to make it a little bit tricky and also there's hardly been any fish out at all and the lake's been near enough full. The only fish to come out on this lake are down in peg one and uh, that, that peg is actually taken until tomorrow just before dark. So I've chucked a bucket in there, the plan is to move there tomorrow at dark. And um, But what I've done just for now, stuck three rods out, well I've actually got one, one more left so I've put two rods out just on solid bags Solid bags in the winter are a fantastic tactic. So just got one more, get tea on. Um, it's gonna be dark soon, so see what tonight brings. And if not, tomorrow we'll be on the move. But either way, I'll keep you updated with all the tactics that I'm using throughout the session. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we'll have a few to show you. Well, we've got our first one well after that. Rod's only been out a couple of hours as well, so that uh, right hand rod, the one that you saw me cast out towards the little tree, so great start. Hopefully more to come. So we just had that fish. And in the winter particularly, it's really, really important to get your rod back out straight away. So we just put it in the sling. What a fantastic start. Yeah, the rod's only been out like literally an hour and a half, so that's gone really well. Got a load of solid bags already tied up. Tied all of those before I obviously came, so um, just means you can get the rod back out straight away. I'm using solid bag stems as well, which again also means that you can get your rod back out a lot quicker, because of course you can tie all your, all your solid bags in advance then as well. And they just go in a bucket or they go in my, um, a PVA bag which is a really handy little uh, bit of luggage so I am using tubing as well rather than a than a leader so let's bite that off slide the tubing down slide that over the uh, yeah over the bag stem and uh, that rod is ready to go out. It's a little bit short, but it should be okay.
So as I said previously, yeah, first fish of the session is always difficult, and particularly after a very difficult weekend by all accounts from the anglers on, on this lake. As I said previously, this one only coming within a couple of hours and the solid bag tactics are working, which now leaves me with the, with the predicament, of course, whether or not I'm gonna to move tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening even. But yeah, great start, hopefully a few more to come. So let's slip this one back. I will actually show you the other side. Uh, the other side's actually nicer. Uh, a few more scales on it. It is still full of beans, so we'll get her back quickly. So yeah, that's the other side. What a cracking start. So that's fish number two. Yeah, quite a long lean one, this one. Yeah, fought really well. I had a funny occurrence as well, sort of 10 minutes before on my right hand rod. So I reeled it in, played something for around about 20 seconds and it just came off. I don't know if there's a trailer or not. But yeah, really good start. What should we go for? Look at it. Yeah, she's a 30. Yeah. yeah, just over 30. 30 and a half, we'll go for. 30 and a half. Well, after that. Yeah. Well, yeah, lovely stamp of fish from here at Willow Bank. This is a 30 pounder that I obviously had, yeah, a couple of hours ago. It's now first light and there's someone moving in next door, which could sort of, yeah, slow things down because my left hand rod is uh, where all the fish are coming from. So the move might still be on the card. What a start. Had another one as well. I'll show you that one in a sec. Absolutely brilliant little session. That's fish number four, and all of these are coming to solid bags. Now there are a couple of products in the tracker range that um, yeah, help with effectiveness, make sure that you fit fishing effectively, make sure you're getting those rods out really quick. And uh, yeah, I'll talk you through those two products now and hopefully you can incorporate them into your own solid bag fishing. Now I've said a few times in this video already that uh, solid bag fishing, particularly in the winter, is all about speed and getting that rod back out as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of luggage from the tracker range that helps me fish really effectively when I am solid bag fishing. And that is the PVA pouch. There are two sizes in this. This is just the, the standard size. So inside this basically is all of my solid bag gear. So when we open it up, I've got my, uh, my liquid for, for injecting my bags. And then inside there as well, I've got my tub of pop-ups. And then the rest of it is just all my solid bag gear, all of my rig gear. So bait floss, PVA tape, I've got scissors in here. I've got obviously all of my needles and things like that. Inside here as well, I've got my braid. And then finally, I've got a spare PVA tape also there is also in here a zip compartment just a small one and inside there 
I've got my, my LEDs, loads of spare LEDs in there. But also this sit compartment is actually uh, fully sealed. It's a little, little waterproof bit. You can wipe it down and all those sorts of things. So if you're not solid bag fishing, you may be using PVA mesh. You can put a load of PVA mesh bits in there. And then in the top section here, I've just got my lighter for blobbing my hook baits. I've got all of my hook beads, swivels, brink tube, hooks, and then a load of bag stems as well. And then I actually keep all of my solid bags. There is a, another zipping section here. So I keep all of my solid bags in the back here. And I just keep my solid bags just in a bit of a yeah, plastic IKEA wrapper. You can fit around about six, six to seven solid bags in there. So plenty of space. And then inside the back here as well, there's another zip compartment and I've got a couple of spare packs of solid bags as well. So yeah, it's a great little product. Just enables me to uh, keep everything nice and tidy all in one place. I don't have to take loads and loads of terminal tackle with me when I'm solid bag fishing. So that is the PVA pouch, really handy bit of kit. Just make sure you've got all your solid bag stuff all in one place, really, really handy. So the next tip we're now gonna talk about is the practicality of fishing solid bags. Now my next tip when you are solid bag fishing is a practical one really and you've got to make sure that your gear is up to the job particularly your rods and also your main line because you are at times casting really heavy bags that can weigh anything up to five ounces so the actual rods that i'm using are the tracker propels and these are 12 foot three and a half pound test curve. Now I'm not casting far at the moment. It's only around about 12 to 11 wraps, depending on, on the actual rod. But these are absolutely fantastic rods for solid bag fishing. That extra, obviously three and a half pound test curve just means you can pump that solid bag a good distance. And I like to use large solid bags as well. Basically the largest solid bag that I can get away with, with the distance that I'm fishing is what I'll use. So with these, really high quality carbon blanks really nice subtle detailing with with the tracker logo on the front there you've got fuji reel seats really nice slim uh, handle as well and yeah a great rod with 50 mil butt eyes now these are the more expensive rods in the range there are a treat uh, cheaper one with the with the defy rods as well but yeah definitely a three and a half pound test curve whichever rods you use i would definitely recommend three and a half pound test curve 12 foot and they will be perfect for your solid bag fishing whatever distance you are fishing and then the final bit is the actual main line so main line wise i'm using a 20 pound one this is 0 0.40 so quite thin diameter for, for a 20 pound line when you are solid bag fishing i would definitely step up um yeah your your breaking strain you are putting obviously a lot of strain on your line when you're casting that sort of weight so nice strong main line the last thing you want to be doing it is cracking off so yeah 20 pound 0.4 diameter will be absolutely perfect <laughs> Well, that's certainly the best looking fish of the session so far. I absolutely love this time of year and it just goes to show that, yeah, simple tactics, a low amount of bait can get you a load of fish and if you pick the right venue and that's the most important thing, um, particularly in the winter. So uh, yeah, we'll slip this one back. Absolutely stunner. Yeah, lovely apple slice scale in mirror. Cool. 
So over the past couple of sessions, I've actually changed my solid bag mix ever so slightly to incorporate a few smaller items and also a slightly different sort of combination of liquids as well. Um, obviously this session it's working really well. So yeah, we'll show you that mix now. Now my mix when I'm solid bag fishing is also very important and the actual base of it is micro pellet. The last thing you want is really big pellets in there because you're just going to trap loads and loads of air. So I'll quickly talk you through the mix now, won't take too long at all. So I do start off actually with a slightly higher oil pellet and that is just a yeah, crayfish pellet, two mil, really small, absolutely stinks and gives off loads and loads of attraction. So. It's a 50-50 mix of pellet, so I start off with that one. And then the actual next one is a beta stim pellet, which is very sweet, very low oil. And obviously breaks down really well on the lake bed. So 50-50 of those two. Just give them a mix. Now you could just fish that as your solid bag mix and it'd be absolutely fine, but I do like to get my solid bags really, really tight. And the way that you're gonna do that is just add, by adding some form of powder in there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of crayfish meal in here. This is just for yeah, added flavor. So just a small amount of that. That isn't really gonna make your solid bags tight. What's going to do that, yeah, is a little bit of, of meal. So this is just an insect meal and just pour a touch of that in. And all that'll do is just fill all of the gaps basically within, within your solid bag. So give that a mix. And that is basically the actual finished solid bag mix. Loads and loads of attraction in there. Yeah, really, really tight and compact. You can really, really make those solid bags absolutely solid, which is what they're supposed to be. Now, liquids play a massively important part in my angling in the summer, but even more so in the winter. Because I'm not putting loads and loads of bait out there, I'm just fishing solid bags and that's it. You wanna be pumping in as much attraction as possible and liquids are gonna do that for you. So within my solid bags, I will inject um, two, two liquids and I just put them basically into, into small containers and both of, the con both of the little mini containers are here. So the first one that I start with is, it's a, quite a thin liquid and that is a Calanus hydrosylate. With all, with all liquids in solid bags, more so in the winter though, um, don't use thick liquids. I would test them in the fridge first. If they don't thicken up, you'll be absolutely fine. So that's one that gets injected in there. And then the next one that gets injected is just some hemp oil. Hemp oil is a fantastic, fantastic oil, particularly in the winter. You can leave that in the fridge or in cold water for days and days and days, and it doesn't thicken, it doesn't congeal. And that is gonna give you a bit, little bit of a warning. If there's fish over your swim, it'll pump up and leave a bit of a flat spot on, on, on the top of the water. But also, yeah, it's very attractive as well. So that is basically what I use inside my solid bags in the winter and also the summer. So give those a try. I'm sure you'll find that useful. This one came out of the blue out of nowhere, this one. Certainly feels a better fish. Oh, it's a nice fish. Oh, God. How's he doing that? Get in. That's a nice fish, that. Scared the life out of me. So we've looked at some of the components from Tracker that I use while I'm solid bag fishing. We've looked at the bait. The final piece of the puzzle is them rigs. 
This one's the second biggest of the session. I can't believe we've still got yeah, a good amount of time left. So without further ado, let's have a look at the rigs that I use while I'm solid bag fishing. So there's one last look. Absolutely stunning fish. Second biggest, second biggest of the session. Off you go, girl. So I don't actually have any more solid bags tied now, so I've gone through them all. So this is probably a good time while well, I'm just about to tie some to show you the actual rig that I'm using within my solid bag. I use the same rig, I've been using this rig inside my solid bag for years and I absolutely love it. It's the only rig that I will ever use in, in a solid bag. It's just based around a Ronnie rig. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward. So starting off at the hook end, that is a wide gape size four hook. And that's just do a runny swivel with a little bit of shrink tube over that hook, obviously just to um, make sure that stays put. And then some 30 pound soft coated braid, sorry, not coated, uncoated braid. I've just got a little bit of putty in the middle there and that's not to pin the pop up down or anything. It's just to make it easier when I am actually putting that inside the solid bag. I do use bag stems, I absolutely love bag stems. The reason why, it just means that I can tie a load in advance, so I don't have to mess about with leg core. Some places have leg core bands as well. So I just use tubing, just direct to the main line, a little bit of silicon over the tubing, and then I just push that down. Got a three ounce square lead on there, and that's just a quick release lead. So obviously if I do get snagged up, or if I lose any fish, uh, or get snapped off or anything like that, that lead can obviously come off and eject. So that's safe as well. And then finally, hook bait wise. So I do actually use a pop-up in my solid bags, which isn't actually that popular of a method for some reason. I just think it's a little cherry on top, particularly when I'm just fishing singles like I am here. Um, it's not like I'm fishing over bait or anything, so it does sit something really visual on top. So that's a 12 mil uh, PB pop-up that just sinks under its own weight. And basically the, yeah, the swivel just sits up like that with the uh, yeah with the pop-up on top so if you are ever fishing any sort of commercial venues that have a decent stock of fish where you've got a good chance of catching a few solid bags are brilliant because obviously they're fed on um, pellet as well um, so yeah give that rig a go use a bag stem wide gate hook and i'm sure you will catch a few just had a fish and uh, I'm not sure what time it is it's I'm guessing it's about 10 o'clock at night um, the fish is just in the net just resting and uh, yeah I've got a load of solid bags obviously tied up from today did a load of retying and uh, yeah it's just really handy obviously just to have them already pre-tied so that you're not messing around at you know two in the morning when you when you're knackered or, or now just means that you can get that rod back out straight away uh, in the winter time as well, particularly the feeding spells are really, really short. So having low pre-tide certainly maximizes your chances of catching another one. So yeah, need to get this rod back out really, really quick. So the rod's back out. Yeah, what a lovely fish, this one, just under 30 pound. Really, really long fish though, as you can probably tell from the camera. So as I say, as we say, it's really important to get that rod back out straight away, especially in the winter. So a solid bag is dispatched on a new spot, actually a little bit closer to that far margin, because it was a little bit warmer today. So yeah, happy, happy days. Really chuffed with this one.
Bang on 30. 30? Yeah, well done, mate. Thank you very much. Well done, mate. That's an absolutely stunning fish, that. And the solid bags. Well done, fella. Well, what a brilliant 48 hours it's been down here at Tubber Manor on Willow Bank. I think that's now nine fish for me. Paul has absolutely smashed it and just had a 30 as well. I think he's had around about 12 carp. All of us are yeah, fishing solid bags during the session. So hopefully those tips that I've given you, you can incorporate them into your own fishing. We've actually still got a few days left on here. As always, thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to the Tracker YouTube channel to keep updated with all the products and all the vlogs. And uh, yeah, don't forget to hit that bell notification button as well. See you on the bank sometime. <laughs>